Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to day two of the MENA Information Security Conference titled Moving from Cyber Resistance to Cyber Resilience in the Age of Smart Cities, Digital Economies, and Internet of Things. Again, thank you all for your time today and a special thanks to all our sponsors who are ready to give you a great thought leadership conference that we hope you will enjoy. My topic today will be trying to make a complex world of cybersecurity a little bit more simple and to break down the cybersecurity complex enterprise into what I call cybersecurity domains. And within those domains today, what I'll be covering is the framework of cybersecurity domains. I'll be covering security architecture, security operations, risk assessments, career development and governance, along with user development, threat intelligence, and physical security. When it comes to frameworks and standards, we first have to look at the international standard organization known as ISO. And following those standards are gonna be a key to being able to develop a methodology to provide a fantastic framework. We also wanna look at the NIST standards to be able to look at how we design our security architecture and pull it in the proper governance and policies and procedure. The National Institute of Standards and Technology, known as NICE framework this year, is a key function area that you'll want to learn and be able to employ in your organization, as well as the COBIT organizational standard as well. And now we'll look at the cybersecurity architecture domain and the subdomains beneath that. This reminds me of when I was a child and I was connecting the dots to create a picture. And that's what we're really doing here. We're trying to create a picture for you to see. So when we look at these domains here, one of the key subdomains is IAM, Identity Access Management, as well as PAM, Privileged Account Management. Now, when we look at those two subdomains, they meet a critical, critical function of the cybersecurity infrastructure. They are responsible for the user access for all the systems to all the data. But people usually consider when they're looking at IAM solutions, they're looking at users. But a lot of times they're forgetting a key area, which is service accounts that can be sometimes hundreds and thousands of accounts on a system that nobody's monitoring. So it's very important for you to employ during your IAM solution some type of user behavior analytics to understand how users versus service accounts are behaving. Now when we look at PAM technologies, privileged account management, we're really looking at where a key function of the business in information technology is running is the administrators or the root accounts or the system accounts in Cisco networking or the Oracle database accounts. Those are what's known our privileged accounts. Those privileged accounts also need to be monitored very carefully as their behavior is key function of a cybersecurity domain and understanding if users are misbehaving or a user account's been hijacked. Now, when we look at data protection, data protection is one of the key functions of being able to secure your enterprise. How do you do data protection? Data protection at the root starts with data classification, and identifying where your sensitive data lives. If you know where your crown jewels are, then you can hide your treasure and protect it more effectively. So that's a key function of data protection. But another key function is, and I visited a lot of customer sites where it shocked me to find that sensitive data like PCI and PII data were in user shares exposed to the entire environment where everybody could access that data. That has to do with employing the least privilege model and securing your sensitive data that not everybody in the organization has access to it. 
So a combination of data classification, identification of sensitive data, locking that data down is a key function of data protection. Secure application development is another subdomain of security architecture that is paramount in getting right. If your code has a lot of back doors in it, or if it's written loosely with not security uh, measures taken in place, then it can cause major problems for your infrastructure. There's software today that while developers write their code, it can check their code and make sure it's being developed securely. Now with the mobilization revolution and cloud revolution, cloud is becoming more and more adopted across the world. The benefits and the enhancements of cloud are significant. And things like test and dev development environments, disaster recovery requirements can be all met with a cloud solution. So having a secure cloud solution is gonna be paramount as well to meeting a cyber architecture that's resilient. Now let's deep dive into security operations, which can be very complex. And managing complexity is a very difficult strategy and sometimes even a losing strategy. So what we're gonna try to do is simplify it. And as my old professor used to say, genius is taking something complex and making it simple, not the other way around. So when we look at security operation centers, we look at active defense, data leakage, vulnerability management, incident response, security operation center, system incident event management like SIMS, along with data protection, business continuity, and disaster recovery are all key functions of a security operations architecture. Security operations also involve prevention, preparedness, and preparation to be able to meet the challenges of today. So these are the main concepts of security operations. Now let's look at risk assessments, the area where we can tell where our strengths are and where our weaknesses are, a very important way to measure our capabilities to meet the threats today. And that also subdomain covers vulnerability scanning, asset inventory, penetration testing, which includes the blue team, the red team, social engineering, and then we start looking at a data-centric focused risk assessment along with source code sourcing. Now let's look at career development. One of the most important functions of cyber resilience and key assets of any cyber resilient infrastructure is the people behind the infrastructure and technology. And so you improving yourself is going to be very important for you to be able to be up to date and meet the challenges of the adversaries who are quickly becoming more agile and innovative and very easily can use a ransomware as a service, for example, attack on you. One way to improve your career and your development is by coming to a conference like this, where you're able to get the best of breed technologies and the best thought leaders giving you insightful strategy and technical information. Another way is gonna be through peer groups, self-study guides, certification, and training. Those are some of the ways that you can improve your career. Now let's look at governance and what's behind governance and be able to provide secure infrastructure with the correct policies and procedures. Well, we have to have the right audit methodology. We have to have the right executive management involvement, which means that we have to have the key performance indicators, the right reports, the right scorecards, all feeding up to our executive management so they have complete visibility in what their risk indicators are. We also have to have written supervisory procedures along with 
the laws and the regulations of the country and now the world that we live in with laws of regulations now expanding across the globe and not just localized. User education is going to be one of the main areas where you're going to have training of large groups and organizations all at once. What you're going to do is you're going to really look at how do I provide security awareness across the entire organization. All it takes is one user in the entire organization to click on the wrong spam email and the adversary hacker bypasses all your security and they enter the infrastructure off of one bad URL spam malware. That's a pretty big risk. So making sure your users are aware of simple things by not clicking on URLs that are unknown to them, by not put up, providing their login information to emails that do not look familiar from where the sender is coming from, are going to be key areas of education across your entire enterprise. Also, training your staff on new skills and to be able to fight the cyber adversaries and fight the cyber attacks that you're facing. So, again, it comes all back to people. People are your key to solving this problem. People are going to be the key to your success. They are your biggest and the most valuable asset that you have. Now let's talk about threat intelligence, one of the fastest and most rapid moving innovative technology methodologies today. Cyber threat intelligence is a key area from the multiple domains that I already covered for you. Why is that? because essentially your SIM, where the central repository of all your information is, is only as intelligent as the data you feed it. So you have to feed all the intelligence that you get from your EDRs, from your different domains and different platforms into one central repository. Within that central repository, you will then run artificial intelligence, machine learning, and bring automation to that engine so that you can have playbooks and uh, remediate and prevent attacks from happening as well as reducing the false positives that plague a sim. And I want to thank you all for your time today and for joining us and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and I want to also thank our sponsors who've invested all their time and the resources for the past several months preparing for this day and giving you a fantastic fulfilled day of events of business executives and technical workshops. Thank you and enjoy your day. Welcome to day two at the biggest virtual cybersecurity conference in the Middle East and North Africa region. This year's MENA ISC 2020 conference is titled Evolving from Cyber Resistance to Resilience in an Age of Smart Cities, Digital Economies and Internet of Things. Learn more about machine learning, security strategy, forensics and analytics, advanced hackers and threats, data security and privacy, application security, government risk and compliance, artificial intelligence, IAM, Identify Access Management, IR, Incidents Response, PAM, Privilege Account Management, SIEM, System Incident Event Management, SOC, Security Operations Center, CTI, Cyber Threat Intelligence. Watch 24 top executive speakers from around the globe, improve your skills with 34 technical workshops, and earn 16 CPE credits. Now it's time to thank our sponsors. A special thanks to our national sponsor, the Saudi Federation for Cybersecurity and Programming, the SAF CSP. Thanking our official distribution sponsor, Cybernight, and our premier diamond, Trend Micro. Thanking our platinum, Blackberry, Cisco, CrowdStrike, Citrix, CyberRanges, CyberReason, Splunk, and VMware Carbon Black. Thanking our Gold Premium and Gold Sponsors. Thanking our Silver Sponsors. Our Education Partner and our Marketing Communication Partners. And our Strategic Alliance. 
We would also like to thank our women in cybersecurity, the changing face of the workforce speakers. We would like to thank our keynote speakers, Curtis Simpson, Deshani Newman, James Carter, Kiri Addison, Mike Santonas, Dr. Sam Small, Samir Omar, Shelley Blackburn, William Malik, and lastly, we would like to thank our cybersecurity thought leaders. Adam Palmer, Adonite Cosgrove, Dr. Almarindo Graziano, Dr. Amin Hasbini, Andrew Delange, Andrew Rose, Baldeep Dogra, Bilal Baig, Bushra Alamadi, Cyril Bozin, Greg Foss, James Hanlon, Jan Tietzi, Jeff Sanderson, Kurt Romer, Mahana Dalkalash, Rashid A. Aloda, Ray Cafferty, Sam Curry, Sebastian Pavi, Tom Davison, and Yasir Liakatula. Enjoy the show.